going on uh, I shouldn't be doing this to be honest <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't be live right now um is somebody changing I'm, the locks at your house right now <laughs> not on my house man I'm telling you anything that could go wrong in this situation has gone wrong so um I have this 
older car um, that I bought back in like, I don't know, 2015. It was the 2007 then, so it was already kind of old then. Um, but I haven't driven it in probably like three or four years. I need to sell the dumb thing. But the problem is, is it's only got like 80,000 miles on it. So it's worth like a thousand bucks. And so it kind of seems like a waste to sell it. Well, I have this thing where I put things in places thinking, oh, if I put it here, nobody's going to be able to find it. And then I can't even find it. So the key for that card, which I've only ever had one, um, I stored someplace and I've hidden it so well that I've hidden it for myself. And now that I'm moving, I have to, um, you know, put it onto the back of a trailer and tow it to where I'm moving to. So, yeah. It's not going to lie, uh, this, this car sounds a lot like Eric Lamella. <laughs> You've had oh, it very forever. Similar. You've had it forever, but there's not many miles on it. <laughs> yeah. And no one knows where the key is. <laughs> and no one knows where the key is. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, you know what? Moving sucks, eh? Yeah, and like to be honest with you, like you notice my background's far barer than it normally is, but it still has far too much up for the fact that the movers are coming on Thursday. So this is for folks that are watching, this is probably going to be my last stream where I actually come on um, until next week, either Tuesday or Thursday. It depends on how quickly I can set up the new place because the movers are coming here on Thursday, but then I have to come back here and clean and do all that stuff. And then, so I'm not going to have a lot of time there set up we went there this weekend this past weekend and moved like the breakable you know like the major breakable stuff and then um just like a few essentials that way we're ready to go when when the guys bring in the big stuff but uh yeah so like i'm gonna have to you know my lighting and the cameras and all that fun stuff is gonna have to get packed up um i've tried to leave it up for as long as possible, but it's really inhibiting my um, getting this room ready for... Um, note to self, don't ever use double-sized tape on walls. Um, it doesn't uh, work well. No. <laughs> it works too well. <laughs> it works too well. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to paint the, the wall behind me for people who are wondering what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And so, uh, yeah. You took down all your Harry Kane posters. <laughs> yeah, all my Harry Kane posters. Um, but no, I did break my boycott. I did break my boycott. Oh, um, what'd, you, what, what'd you order? I bought some autographed uh, Harry Kane photos. Because I figured it would probably be one of my last chances to get them. Yeah. So, um, I figured oh. I had to have something for... Hopefully not. For uh, or something, but so you got your team USA shirt on, yeah, man, gold cup champions, gold cup champs, congratulations. Yeah, uh, we, we are the. I, I wasn't able to watch the uh, Canada Mexico game; it was on too late for me. But I also wasn't on TV, and, and it just yeah, uh, just looking at the stats, it looks like we gave them a good run for their money. But yeah, well, fair play to Canada; they did. They actually it was it was a. Uh, I thought they were going to get their butts kicked, but they didn't get their butts kicked. And in fact, it, they made a, they made a match out of it. Um, and yeah, uh, considering the gap in quality between the two sides, that you know that's that's pretty impressive. I think the men's team is actually starting to gain a little bit of momentum. Not not that much, you know. We're we're Canada. We're always kind of going to be. Well, you the women's team. You guys beat the U.S. women's team yesterday, didn't you, or something like that in the Olympics? Oh, Oh yes, we did. <laughs> oh yes, we did. But the good. women's team. Good is for you. I'm miles, proud of you. I am not miles. a fan of the U.S. women's national team. Are I'm you not, not. I am not a fan of the U.S. women's women's national team. Not because they're women, but because I think that they're more concerned about politics than they are about playing football on the pitch. That's a personal opinion. I don't necessarily disagree with their stance on it. I think they go about it in a very bad way. I personally don't like Megan Rapinoe at all. 
if you were to take her off of the team, I'd probably enjoy the team far more. But personally, I dislike her as a person. It has nothing to do with any of her um, intersectionality uh, boxes that she checks. I simply just don't like her as a person. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I'd be lying if I said I was big time into international football from from the the aspect of being a Canadian. You know, I don't follow it that closely. My most of my entertainment value comes from Tottenham and the Premier League and the Champions League. And yeah, you know what? If Canada puts together a decent team and 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 makes a decent run in the World Cup coming up in North America, of course everybody will uh, be on board here in the country. And we're, the, the women are always entertaining and, and good to follow because they're they're actually good. And uh, it's really nice to see that they're going to get at least a silver and, and maybe a gold. I don't even know when they play, to be honest, but Sweden will be a tough team. I know that much. Yeah, like uh, like I, I'm I, I used to be a big supporter of the U.S. men's national team up until like, you know, I guess you could say the Trump area. And, and maybe it's that Trump brought out the worst in everyone. I, I, I don't know, but it really put a bad taste in my mouth after that. So, um. Yeah, but the men's national team two trophies in the summer that's pretty good really good yeah. Yeah. and this is the kicker this is the kicker for people that are out there watching um, our C team beat Mexico's B plus A team so for me that is showing a good positive step forward that without a single international star, we were able to um, defend well and give uh, Mexico a run for their money. Um, but the U.S. men's national team is now more successful than Tottenham Hotspur. So, um, <laughs> oh, that's pretty low bar. Yeah. Pretty low bar to be jumping over. Hey, it's the U.S. Men's National Team. So this is not this is the high jump. You'd only need your calf muscles to get over that bar. <laughs> there's not a lot of bar that 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 is that is available. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Christian Romero is uh, a Spurs player, I guess. Here we go. The magic three words. Yeah, almost, here we go. It, almost as magic as till they're holding the shirt. Yeah, he hasn't held a shirt yet, but he for Bitsy Romano did post a picture of a of a Spurs shirt photoshopped onto him. He did, yeah. So uh, um maybe he's maybe he's you know listening in on our group chat there and uh and he's fed up with Bob in in his in his T H S S S T T T H S S T. We're all fed up with Bob. Piss off, Bob. Bob is going to be joining us later in case I have to jump off. Um, <laughs> you spoke his name. It's like Voldemort. You know, the more yeah. you say his name, the more powerful he becomes. Beetlejuice, <laughs> Bob Spur, Bob Spur, Bob Spur. Here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so folks at home, I'm really, really sorry that the channel has done like a video or maybe two videos a week for the last couple of weeks. I uh, trust me, it it hurts me to not be able to, but I really would feel like an a hole of a husband if I'm on here chitter chattering while my wife is doing things. So, you know, she's packing her stuff because I she asked me yesterday, um, you help know, pack some boxes in the kitchen and stuff like that, and I said, trust me, you don't want me to do that because I'm a guy and I'm just gonna throw stuff in the box and tape it up, and uh, so. You know, I'll do the the meats and potatoes. I'll go power wash the driveway, back porch, the house, clean it up. You know, do all that stuff. Uh, you don't want me packing because for me packing is shoving things in a box until it's full, taping it up, and uh, ready to go. No, you're the. That's the worst. That's the worst. Yeah. You know, like I, I used to work for a moving company, so uh, you me watching you pack a box would probably be like you watching me do lawn care. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Um, although the lawn isn't isn't looking that great either because I didn't do any of the summer weed treat you know pre emergence because I'm leaving. So what's the point in spending money on that jazz? Um, 
But uh, yeah, so there's some weeds in the front yard. It does burn me. There's some, uh, from the summer heat here in North Carolina, there are some stressed out areas too that have gone dormant, which normally um, on a regular watering schedule wouldn't have. And uh, that, that burns me a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a tough one. But for people that are watching, we we still do have a channel and these are the people that support it uh, month in and month out along with our um youtube members um you can join uh, become a youtube member um you, you might want to do that for the new season i've got a bunch of stuff planned for people that are curious i'm, I'm gonna do this a little bit before we get into the the meat and potatoes just because it's probably going to be a week or so until um we get so kind of a new schedule um cody you start work at some point in time so i don't know how this the schedule of this show will change if you decide to go back to work um stay tuned folks at home for that as cody knows more about that we will uh update you all on that uh but guaranteed um i'm announcing it now whether it's on this channel all the time i'm not 100 sure but we will be doing real talk with will and stell um in the in the evening sometime during the week um where we basically just um Know, drop hot takes and piss people off because uh, that's what we're good at and <laughs> that'll be a fun show to watch make sure you tune in for that one um and uh also be doing a wednesday fpl show so fantasy football league if people don't if people want to join the league it is free to join you don't need anything you just go sign up for a free account um the league code is one four lowercase i four lowercase m one um, just look for, uh, uh, that, um, there is a, there's not one now, I don't think, but there will be an auto join link in the description if people want to do that. Um, or just search, uh, THFC rants leagues, or just put in the, I think you can just put in the code, just join a league. You put in that code and it'll automatically throw you in that league. I'll be doing the, those videos once a week, probably on a Wednesday. I probably, I want to say probably around one o'clock, uh, Eastern time. Um, that hits both audiences. Just basically, like from a, a Spurs a perspective, and um, on FPL, and believe it or not, so um, I wanted to be able to have you. I was hoping to move last week so that I could do a video this week um, with with your first draft. Your first draft for people that are watching. Um, don't pick. Um, many Spurs players for your first week uh, because we're playing Manchester City. And that's the great thing about FPL is that you you have to throw your team bias in the in, in, in the bin, right? You got to go for the players that are scoring the most points week in, week out. Um, maybe somebody like Son um, or somebody even maybe, I, I don't even think Harry Kane's going to be playing. So it's probably be, um, I, I'm still not convinced that he's going to be leaving the club this year I, I i i and we'll get into that i'm sure um but you don't want to do that and then uh we'll be doing our pre and post match uh late night rant shows again um so you'll have those um so at least two times a week um bald and beard tottenham boys show on tuesday for as long as cody's able to do it and um uh mr k coming back mr k is back and he's, uh, I think the show is called Let's Talk K. It's going to be on Tuesday nights here. Um, all kinds of content coming up. It's going to be starting on the channel here in, in August. So um, taking a little uh, forced sabbatical, I guess you could say, here on with the, with the amount of shows that we're doing. But uh, the, new, the new studio is going to be have a different look. Um, should have multiple camera angles, which only helps me it doesn't help the people on the show but um for my little square it's going to be pretty fancy um so i'm setting it up from scratch whereas this was just kind of an office that i just kind of threw stuff into this one's going to be focused uh, on that the primary purpose of the office will be a youtube studio um i will also plan on doing some during the season trying to get some of the if i have time um Trying to get to some of the supporter group uh, where they go to the pub and do the watch along and kind of do 
like what We Are Tottenham TV does at the matches, kind of try to do that at some watch-alongs. Um, so go to the bar, you know, have a camera set up, watch people jump and scream or cry, depending on mostly crying is probably what's going to happen, but j jumping and screaming when we jump and scream and crying when we cry, and then maybe interviewing some people in there, hopefully make a couple new friends, maybe have a few guys in the studio um, to do a little podcast. I am going to set the studio up for more than, than one geezer. So yeah, it should be should be fun it's not a huge space um but it's it's more conducive to what uh, and in setting it up in a way that's conducive for what i'm doing should be should be cool but yeah that's what we got going on at, at thfc rants coming up soon busy busy time busy busy time busy busy time busy time for everything right now jesus <sighs> Brian Gill or Hill, sir. Um, what's your reaction to the conference, dude? I don't even know. So we're going to be matched up against either Paco de Ferreira or Larn. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, two-legged tie played at over August nineteenth and twenty-sixth. Uh, fantasy football for for the Premier League is just PremierLeague.com. So just go to PremierLeague.com, make sign up for a free account, and uh, throw in that code, and you can join it. Oh, also, too, for I forgot to say, people uh, top four will be winning uh, uh, THFC Rants merch, which I'm going to start uh, designing more. It's a uh, it's 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 a uh, Lost its appeal because it's that's what happens with merchandise. If you keep the same stuff up there long enough, people get bored of it. Um, we're gonna have some new stuff there. Um, so I'm gonna start doing some um, stuff like that, and uh, also uh, BJ BJ will be back and he'll be doing a um, news show. Um, uh, from location, he'll be filming from outside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And uh, at least once or twice a week, and giving uh, article updates on football. So I apologize in advance now um, for all the people that he offends with his uh, lack of knowledge of football. So, yeah, it'll all be fun. All be fun. But Romero be flying in in the next day or two dude i was i was a little bit worried um because a lot of the first negotiations happened while you know kane was on vacation and i was a little bit worried that some of this mess might throw a wrench in that yeah well i think whenever whenever tottenham are negotiating for a top target it's difficult not to be worried you know especially like We've been aching for a rejuvenation of the back line for, for years now. Um, you know, it's been a while since since Toby and Yan were at the height of their powers. And uh, it just probably the most frustrating aspect of watching Tottenham the last couple seasons has been the way that we defend or the lack thereof. So to finally get what appears to be, I mean, it's tough because like I haven't seen very much of Romero play. Uh, so I, I'm not really in a position to pass judgment on what type of player he is. But it's a player that Paratici knew well. He brought him in at Juventus. Um, I don't think that this deal ever happens unless we have Paratici at the club because it just does not seem like uh, the type of negotiation process that Daniel Levy would have not walked away from eventually. You know, Levy has to get a deal. You know, he just has to get a deal. And we've seen quotes from Pratici admitting that when you have a guy and he's your guy, it's fine. It, you can't worry about overpaying. So I think that's probably what we've done a little bit is uh, gone and overpaid a little bit for him. Let's just hope that he adapts. Well, he seems like the type of player that will be able to transition from Syria to the premier league. He's a physical player. He's an aggressive player. It'll be important who we either sign or who we already have that they decide to pair him with as our top center back pairing because 
you know, it always is, but it's exciting. It's, you know, it's exciting. I just wish that <laughs> it seems like when was the last time that we just had straight good news without having to digest it with a side piece a right side... now. So the good news is that John N just signed up for the man smell level of the Patreon. That's Doesn't that's I... there you go. That is that's some good news. But you know what I mean? Like we, we, we got rid of Lamella, but we brought in a left winger, a little bit unproven, not necessarily meeting uh, an immediate need for the squad. We've brought in Romero now, but th there's complete turmoil going on with the Harry Kane situation. And it would just be nice for once to just have a day filled with good news and good news alone. But it doesn't seem like uh, it's not like an Oscar, man. That doesn't happen. Um, that, but can I stop being Will for a second and be Frank? Um, Frank says that, you know, I'm really not upset about this Harry Kane thing. To be honest with you. Um, I, I, I don't want him to leave, but we don't need him. If the money we get from selling him is, is, is used correctly. Now, will the money be used correctly? That's, Obviously, and also a huge thing, but there's no one player who's bigger than the club. I mean, how many superstars have we loved and lost over the last, you know, 20 years? Quite a few. Yep. I mean, I think, like, there's been obviously been a, a, a lot of backlash over Kane refusing to show up and and now you can see that yeah. the media cycle is backpedaling a little bit in terms of oh he just there's 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 lots of spin going on so it just depends how you want to to view it you know i think that i think that he is protesting you know that he is trying to force his way out of the club but this this doesn't surprise me it doesn't surprise me the way that things went uh, from from the time that we leading up to Jose sacking to the end of the season, you know the signs were all there. I put a poll out on May twenty first asking um, if Harry Kane forces his way out, and that was the wording I used. If Harry Kane forces his way out, is he a turncoat? And over eighty seven percent of people said no. And I asked the same question yesterday in a poll. And now that's flipped where two thirds of people say yes. So I don't know. I mean, it's hard. Like, because one's theoretical and one is emotional, right? Like, one, now th there are, there are actions, there are actions being taken now to, to like, but I, I just not sure. Like, I think this has just caught so many people off guard who didn't think that this was in Harry Kane's repertoire to pull a villain move like this. You know, like everyone, there were so, so many people. You could see it on Twitter leading up. Oh, Kane would never do that. Kane would never well, do that. Well, I said that. he would, and people told me I was an idiot. So. Yeah, no, it, this is not, this does not surprise me. And I think, I think that's probably what's, what's, when, when you take everything, because I don't agree with like the, un, some of the unreasonable reactions that some people are having. And of course, some of it is just like drivel from people who are looking for it, it, it's like a pissing contest who can who can be the most edgy and how upset they are about about harry kane not showing up to training um well and for me i mean that i don't know if you read the athletic article or not no no i i just listened to the bullet point summary that that sim did on the show this morning for we are taught on tv bro i mean they made it sound like harry kane was he was just gonna boycott the whole season well, obviously, if that happens, uh, then then that would be that that would be the time to kind of take his legacy and flush it down the toilet. Personally, I am not ready after one day or one week of missed training to just take and f take everything that this man has done for this club and just discount it completely and th and flush it down the toilet. That's just me personally. I don't. I don't like what he's doing. I'm not defending what he's doing, 
but I was mentally, I was prepared for him to do this. Whereas I think there's lots and lots of people out there who were not, who were not mentally prepared for him to do this. Yeah. Like, uh, I was mentally prepared for it. I still don't think he's going anywhere. Um, and I think that it's going to come down to uh, who has the most, uh, the bigger canads. Um, the, the thing that I'm, that I am surprised at is how non-political that he's, how I have to be careful with my words here. I don't want to say something that's going to get me in trouble. Uh, I'm surprised at how um, rash he's being and how not smart he's being about how he's going about. Uh, speaking of people that aren't smart, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you always got to come in oh, right when I'm saying something. <laughs> They can uh they 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 can uh banter you with. Yeah. Um Jeez. but to finish my thought before Bobby jumps in here, um and Bob is he's our he's bald and he's bearded and he's a Tottenham boy, so that's why he's welcome on the show. Um there may be the opportunity that I have to jump out and jump in, so I wanted to make sure that there was somebody here um that let uh that didn't make Cody have to talk to the audience all by himself. A desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Yeah, I am. Uh, the locksmith did call right before the show started and said he was going to run late, so he may not even come during the show now. But that's um, you never know. He said he's going to as soon as he can. I woke up next to some random car keys this morning. <laughs> all the way in the UK for a 2007. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 2007 Kia. It actually said on the key, I've only done 80,000 on the clock. (laughs) It's true. It's true. Mm. But back back to the Harry Kane thing. Um, For me, Mr. Kane is not being very bright about how he's going about this for two reasons. Um, He's alienating fans, first of all. Um, If he was, if this was about, his issue with the club there are steps that he could take on social media um, and in turn the narrative in his favor. And he's not taking advantage of that at all. And him being silent on social media is a, uh, um, is causing people to be far more, upset and i think that they are upset i think it's a very i think it's slightly childish if you want my honest opinion um uh, i don't like it and i I don't want to bring up the the women's national team again but it's kind of the same thing i don't like the rules that are in the contract that i had already signed and so therefore i'm going to moan and cry about it afterwards when you should have been smart enough to know to put things in your contract that allow you to negotiate after a certain amount of time or after a certain threshold is met, right? And this gentleman's agreement BS, um, there's no such thing as gentleman's agreements and contracts. It's what's in the contract is what's in the contract. Um, I could be a nice guy and give you more than what's in your contract, but I don't have to do that. You know what I mean? So my opinions on on that i just don't think i just don't think that he's doing this in a in a in a in a, in a positive way yeah i can understand that point of view um but if he's serious about leaving the club there's not really going to be a positive way for him to achieve that especially when the club want to hold on to him and and don't want to accept anything less than so why not put an official transfer request? He might. There's been rumors that he might do that. I right? mean, just do that. That is far. Do that, and then go to training. It's far better than not doing that, and then if you don't let me go, I'm not coming to work. That's my impression of Hurricane. I just don't understand the logic. I don't understand what the end game is with regards to not turning up, and I. And I know 
I know Cody will know that I agree with Will with regards to some form of statement or a message that he could have put out um, to just calm it down. Just something factual we could point to and say, look, here we go. This is what we need to discuss about, discuss, rather than make up our own narratives and uh, make up our own agendas like some people are doing and pointing the finger at Harry Kane. I agree with you, Co. He hasn't. He's nowhere near, near destroyed his image and his legendary status within Tottenham. But unfortunately, mate, he has he has tainted it a bit. Because there's one. Because well, there's one Bob, thing. Just I, before, I just a, just in terms of like this statement that you would like him to mm. make. How definitive of a statement would you be expecting from him? Would you be expecting him to come out and concrete say, "I would like to leave Tottenham Hotspur"? No. What, like, I'm not sure what he could accomplish. Thing is, it it just depends what you mean by e that, right? E e e even if it was bullshit, even if it was a state, uh, you know, because. I mean, today, within the space of 42 minutes, that's how sad I am, actually counting the minutes, we had him not turning up because because of COVID. He wasn't going to turn up. He's never going to turn up, and he's going to turn up in the week. We had four different scenarios within the space of 40-odd minutes. A, a single statement, even if he'd said, I've, I've been, uh, been away to the Bahamas and, and COVID or whatever, if, even if one of them were true, just come out and and say it and what we're going to achieve out of it is, is something like i say factual and then we can have a discussion about it and then we can make our own genders because right now there isn't a definitive um uh, a reason why he's not turned up apart from what we're all thinking is is, is chuck the toys out of the pram and it is given the chance to 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 fans to actually point the finger at him and saying you're like this you're like this you're like this and what but moving forward there's one thing we always said we can go with our with our blessings. He can go. We understand why. And 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 I even now I can understand why he wants to go. I don't want him to go, but I will go with my full blessing. But one thing we always said: he'll always be hundred percent professional. I think majority of us don't want to feel hatred or or, or we don't want to dislike uh, Harry Kane. But the fact, and it's only that one action is by not turning up for training has just left a really big sour taste in my mouth. I can't speak for everyone else, but I totally understand the reason why he's got to there is because of Levy uh, and Enoch being uh, being so. Uh, I just think ambition, it is, et cetera. I agree but with I you, Bob. But I think he's been complete. He's done this completely the wrong way. And people yeah, who are watching this, you need to hire me as like your PR person or serious. I could do a far <laughs> better job than the gets that you guys have running because here's how it works if you really want to leave the club this is what you do you go out on social media how many followers does harry kane have on social media go out on social More media me. i've given my heart i've bled for this club i want to move on i want to go and win trophies but i'm going to come to work and i'm going to do my job I'm and it's daniel hard. levy that needs to know that i should be i should be allowed to go on to do better things that I would, right I there. Put, you, I, I, yeah, I point the guns at Daniel Levy. Point the guns at Daniel Levy. Don't so, take it out on your teammates, on the fans. Yeah, That's yeah, what he's I doing. Think, but I don't think Harry Harry Kane sh should be should should put any uh, Daniel Levy's name. I think we should we will be able to judge what. I and mean, we can't sit here and say that him turning up, and not turning up for um for work is 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 going to be unprofessional. Then him putting out a statement, putting his. Uh, uh, bosses under the, uh, 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 you know. Uh, no, I think it would. Uh, I think that would be far more effective. You know, knowing Daniel Levy and him not liking negative press. I think everyone knows that. Will I think? I yeah. think the first part of that statement, absolutely fantastic. I, I'll put, I just put that one out. But mentioning it just becomes tit for tat, and I, I think he needs to be bigger than that. And I honestly do believe if he was going to leave, or if he was going to have a bit of time out, if he was recovering from COVID, just put something out. I mean, Spurs. For, for, since since the end of last season, mate, we can make a list of the guessing games we've had, we've had to do, be it the manager, be it Jose, why he's been sacked, when he got sacked, the manager, the DOF, the players coming in, the players going out. It's just been a constant shit show of guess game from all the fans. We've never had anything. Clarification we need. We need a bit of consistency, you know, so, something for, for us fans. Well, I think we deserve a bit more. We're a yeah. big club. We're not just right. saying that. We're we're right. Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Yet yeah, we're we we we're, we're left as a laughing stock. People are. I wear a badge on my sh on my jacket every single morning, and for the last couple of days, and I saw Cody. Yeah, I saw Cody. Uh, 
it makes you think twice because you know what? People aren't even taking the piss out of me anymore. They're feeling pity for me, and that's worse. Yeah. Look, the, the alternative angle that I would provide on the whole Harry Kane should come out and make a public statement is that by by leaving it the way that it is right now, and I'm not defending like him his actions per se, mm. yeah. but by leaving it the way that it is now, even if it was complete bullshit, let's say he doesn't get his move from to Manchester City. If he doesn't go public, he leaves that back door open that, that he can come back through in the public eye and say, this was all a misunderstanding, blah, blah, so. blah. Even if it's even if it's total bullshit. The thing is, like, if he comes out and makes a public statement that isn't truthful, then it's just as bad as if he tries to make a public statement later on saying you know, apologizing or, or, or anything like that. So but hasn't he made a statement by not turning up? But my biggest yeah. thing is code is, is, is he had one, he's always had one card to play and, and us fans played it always for him. Even if he, uh, um, even if he stays, we all want to, we all know he wants to move, but even if he stays, you know, a bit Harry Kane, our Harry Kane, our captain or vice captain, uh, the, the, the king of the lane, he's always going to give us hundred percent. You know, he'd always be a professional. He'd always put his head down. He would always give 100% Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. By his actions, by not turning up for Tottenham Hotspur, he's tainted that, mate. And and there will be people out there, not myself, I think he'll give 100%. But I think if, yeah, yeah, I think even if he gives 100% and he has a bad game, when he has a bad game, I still think he'll stay. When he has a bad game for Tottenham, and he will, all those fingers are going to come up. And that frustrates me because the fingers should be pointing at Harry Kane, he should be pointing at Levy and Enoch. But... There will be fans there who will say, oh, he's having a shit game. You know why? Look, he doesn't care about Tottenham. He wants to leave anyway. His heart's not in it. Blah, blah, blah. He's given the opportunity to some of the fan base to point the finger at and, and question his character. Well, I mean, just even the he fact that, that normally, if this wasn't an issue and if he ended up missing the City game, first of all, I think that if it was a normal, if he wasn't wanting to leave, even if he only had two weeks of training, he wouldn't miss the City game. That Harry Kane, who wanted to play for Tottenham Hotspur, wouldn't have missed that game, regardless of whether it's two weeks of break. Or, Danny you know, Rose turned up all season. Yes, Rose yes, season. yes, that's not that's not comparable. Yeah, no, that is that's no, not comparable no. at all. Because Danny Rose, right? Let's make that <laughs> oh. clear, okay? Danny Rose wanted to move away from Tottenham. He wanted to go to a certain club. He couldn't get the move that he wanted. He got stripped of his number because he wasn't looked at as a piece that Jose wanted to work with. He was offered a buyout probably for less than what he was due for the remaining year on his contract, he refused it, okay? He wasn't told not to show up to training, so part of his contract was to still show up and train. So the only thing that Danny Rose would have achieved by not showing up to training is getting himself a fine, and that wasn't something that would have been in his self-interest. So let's not say that Danny Rose is more of a talking yeah, no, legend sorry, than sorry. Harry Kane, I, right? I, I, but I, like, I feel, but, 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 the thing about the... Uh, now I've gone off on the Danny Rose thing, and I... <laughs> No. Well, I want to hit this do, Terry do, do Wright thing too. The gun? Do you think he's jumped the gun a bit? The, the thing, the thing with the Kane situation. Okay, the, I feel like there's people who are looking at this like Kane has gone from being a player who bleeds, who who uh, bleeds for the badge, has Tottenham in his blood, has suddenly like turned into a turncoat overnight. The fact that he's gone to this level. I don't find I don't believe that it's just something that's happened overnight. There's been a yeah. series of events that we cannot know for sure what's been going on over the course of several months, if not years, yes. between him and the upper hierarchy of this club. And until we either get a resolution to the situation or the details come out in the wash, I'm ready to sit back and just be a little bit more patient than some of the people who are ready to flush Harry Kane's legacy down the fucking toilet after one day of mistraining or one week of mistraining either. It's entirely possible that after this has got out of his system and the transfer window closes, it's entirely possible he plays for Tottenham. He plays as well as he ever has. He bangs 30 goals in. We win in the FA Cup. Like All those things are possible. So I, I think, I think the, way that, the way that I look at it, Kane has done enough for this football club over the years. And the thing is, too, think about the actions and the root cause of them and where, where he is coming from. Exactly. Harry Kane, if, if you could tell Harry Kane right now that you could stay and win trophies at Tottenham and guarantee it, of course he would stay. He is acting out of his desire 
for his for for success not only for this for 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 himself but for this club he's looking at the situation and he sees a no win situation maybe he's wrong in the way that he's looking at it exactly but we're as far away now despite like we'll see where we are at the end of the window and everything but like we fi- we had our lowest league position finish last year in 12 years we're in the third tier of european football right we're charging the most that we have ever charged for a season ticket or for an individual game ticket. The product is arguably as bad as it's been since, I don't know, before Harry Redknapp. I mean, you don't know what's gone on between him and Daniel Levy that's made this relationship as toxic as it's been. I don't think that he, in his own mind, is making like an unreasoned unjustified move there's stuff that's going on that we cannot understand and and i'm i'm just not ready to pass judgment yet i'm not so yeah privately then code how do you know that how do you know that that hasn't been tried already like well you didn't show up to training like not showing up to training he's not gone from zero to ten I'm sorry. Like I, I refuse to yeah, believe I, that. I agree there have you. been measures that have been happening. There have been arguments or whatever's been going on. Yeah. We, we just don't know. He has not gone, as he I said, he's not gone from being a happy Tottenham boy yeah, to being a pissant that didn't show up to training. He hasn't done that overnight. I agree with you. I agree with you. Doesn't it, matter why no, he did it. Yeah, there's, there's no. I, I don't. I fail to see the logic behind not turning up for, for Spurs and creating this circus you know maybe he know I, I, I bet you there's a part of him that's thinking sitting at home thinking mm, maybe i shouldn't have done this and all this uh narrative that oh uh, it's didn't all his come agents, in today. agents sorry no he didn't come in it's, it's not his agent he's like all this about oh his agent stopped him from going no no he's not gonna look at his brother and say okay well, i won't do it it's not being ill-advised it's all down to him and i can differentiate between him being a legend constantly um bleeding for Tottenham and going down as well. And people are saying, oh, it's not Harry Kane FC. I know he's not, but we're a weaker team without him. We're a much weaker team w- w- without him. I don't want him to go. I want him to stay. But I can differentiate. I can, I can, I can, I can put a line in the sun and say today or yes, and yesterday what he did, in my eyes, was completely wrong. And and unfortunately, it has given the chance to, to, to the fan base to start. If he turned up yesterday, and today, and put out a statement that he's leaving Tottenham Hotspur. Of course, there'll be people saying, "Oh, you, you trade." Of course, there would be, but at least we'd know, and at least we'd have stats. And we'd I would feel far that. less better about it if he'd have done that. If he'd have simply said, "I'm putting in my transfer," if he'd have called the press conference, and said, "I'm putting in a transfer request," you know, I've I've given my best for the club. I think it's time for me to move on. Um, but until that until that happens, I'm going to give 110 percent for the badge and for the fans. And for the people who have given me a career, um, I would have been like, yeah, I would have cheered him on, right? But not saying anything and then not coming to work. And like, Terry, I'm sorry, like you, you said that you, you, you didn't think it's in Kane's character to not come to work. Well, he didn't come to work two days in a row. So obviously it isn't his character. And like there's a saying goes, you can build a thousand bridges, kill one puppy. I've, I've, I've changed it to PG. Um, <laughs> And you're a puppy killer. Yeah. Look, <laughs> as far as the, uh, this type of comment, I'm not condoning Harry Kane not showing up for training. Yeah. I'm not yeah, saying exactly. that I like it. I'm not saying it's the right way to do anything. I'm just saying there's, there's, we can't know exactly what's going on. You know, anyone who's been in a toxic work environment, it is, it, it can be very, it can be very difficult. So, I mean, I just want to give it some time here because. You know what? Like, I would be, I'd be love to know in the comments what everybody's reaction was when we signed Gareth Bale last fall on loan. Gareth Bale, who sat out of training to force his move to Real Madrid as well, right? Does anybody look at Luka Modric, who sat out as being a, a snake? You know, you see Luka Modric getting all sorts of love during Euros. You see Gareth Bale being showered with praise and and love. Nobody was saying don't don't bring Gareth Bale back because he was a snake that sat out of training. I just think that to, there to, were people that said that there were not not many, not many. But There's you're talking gonna... ten years after the fact, right? I'm sure in I'm ten saying... years everybody will like if Harry Kane wants to come back at the age of 38. How, it... What percentage of people said that though? Were you excited about Gareth Bale coming back? Sure. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course you were, right? So like it's just a it's just a like step back from the situation for a second and exercise a little bit of foresight. As much as it hurts that Harry Kane has made it clear that he wants to leave Tottenham Hotspur, 
we but just, that's not the issue, Code. We sh- yeah, I've never called him a snake. There's, there's no issue there's lots with, of people with saying regards stuff to. Like that. That's, I'm not. I'm not having. I don't take issue with either one of your positions. I don't. And and everyone is entitled to their opinion, and I respect it. I can understand why people have been blindsided by this, and why they're reacting in an emotional way in saying and and the thing is too a lot of it is social media snowball effect where one person gets the ball rolling and then it just it becomes a pissing contest to see who can be the most edgy and the most upset about what harry kane is doing until people are uttering his name in the same sentence as saul campbell well that's just ridiculous to me and i I, i'm not i'm not there yet i i will hit that point if this goes on if this escalates and if harry kane leaves tottenham hotspur Goodbye, Harry Kane. I don't give a shit if you score a goal ever again. You'll be a player for another football club, and you won't be the a player that plays for the club that I love. I, I think, think the difference. That- I think the difference here between the Harry Kane and Luka Modric and the Gareth Bale situation is, is that those those guys went to Real Madrid, and Real Madrid were willing to fork out the cash. I mean, Gareth Bale at the time was a world record transfer, right? So, um. Whereas with Harry Kane, he's doing this when all city, the only proposal city have made to Tottenham Hotspur was a hundred million, which is the same with the pair. So you're saying that Harry Kane's worth the same as Gar- as a uh, Jack Grealish. I think that's ridiculous. If city had come in and said, we'll give you 130 plus a player, or we'll give you 150 straight clack cash. And then Daniel Levy's turning it down. No, 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 I'm not selling. I'm not selling. I'm not selling. Then if Harry Kane were to, to do a, something like this, I think that makes more sense. But when you're coming in with a hundred million pounds, that's low, man. That is a really low ball for the person who won Player of the Year, or not Player of the Year, but you know, Playmaker of the Year. You know, gold, Golden Boot. Um, you know, as many you know wh- who Harry Kane is in the world. I mean, how many strikers in the world are better than Harry Kane? The only probably should- maybe only two that you can even argue. I don't think we should fucking take a discount. No well, way. That's what I'm saying. So why is he protesting at us not taking a discount? That's what he's protesting right now. He's protesting. I don't, I don't know that for sure. Right? We do. He we might, know. He might, no, he might be protesting the fact that Levy won't even pick up the phone. We don't know that. We don't no, know no, that no, Harry no, no. Kane. We, know we what, don't know that on. Harry Kane is expecting Tottenham hold to accept, on. To we accept know a hundred million pound offer. We know what offer City has made. We know that. That is verifiably known in the press. What offer City has made to Tottenham Hotspur? What official thing offers they've made? They've ta- put on the table. They've put on one at the very beginning of the transfer window for 100 million pounds. That's it. It's the only official bids that they've ever made to Tottenham Hotspur. I saw right, rumors today that they upped it to 130. Mm-hmm. The thing is, like, we you can say, yeah, but it's right, not that's official. Been, that's that's not an official bid. Well, yeah, but if, I'm talking about official bids here. We don't know. We can't sit here and pretend to know that we know everything that's going on between these two parties. We're talking they about official a, bids. They might be in constant contact. I'm not saying that they're not in constant contact. I'm talking about official bids. City has not sent over an official bid for more than 100000 we'll that, 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 that does not mean that Harry Kane yeah. is expecting Tottenham to accept that offer, and that's why he hasn't shown up to training. Well, then, then, then City uh, needs to show us the money. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. We, 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 we don't know. The only fact that we know... That's happened over the last couple of days is Harry Kane not turning up for training. Every other reasons why or his motive, anything else is just a guessing game. And that's why I wanted something concrete. Exactly, Jen. Clarification from, from, uh, from the Harry Kane camp or even Tottenham Hotspur. Because to prevent all this, we don't know. We don't know if it's uh, to do with... It is, it, his gentleman agreement might not even be about letting him go after three seasons. It might be a case of you promised me that you're going to invest in the in the team, in the, in the club. You're going to bring X, Y, Z player in. That might be the gentleman's agreement. The gentleman agreement and the verbal contract means absolutely nothing uh, in today's game. And I think Ali Ali um, Ali Gold mentioned that as well. It means nothing. It absolutely means nothing. And um, and people who advised him obviously went down the down the incorrect. The the only thing we can look at and the only thing we can discuss and the only thing we can build a narrative at, uh, with is, is, is facts. And the fact is, in some people's opinion, in my opinion, him not turning up for training is a, is a bit of a shit show. At the same time, 
in a separate issue. The reason why he's got to that is because of Evie, Evie, <laughs> Levy, um, and Enoch. And that's where the fingers should be pointing. Not so much at Kane. I think it, what he's done, his action was a bit of a shit show, and I totally disagree with it. But our energies, our hate, our dislike, our discontent should be pointing at Enoch and Levy because of they're the reasons why he's got to that unfortunate, one hundred percent agree, really silly decision. One hundred percent agree. And like Jen Han says here, though, I, some criticism. But yes, go ahead. I, I think this is absolutely spot on. I don't think it's a coincidence. I, I coincidences to me. Um, aren't coincidences there's always something that's this could going have been on this could have been pure humility on his part no i don't think i don't think it's a coincidence that the two bids were identical i don't i think he had already talked to city and what sure. they had probably told him what they were willing to pay um and so that's why he mentioned 100 million and when neville laughed and said T more like two he you saw harry kane's that's face went like yeah yeah so how do you how do you guys <laughs> think this how do you guys think this ends if you had to speculate right now. Uh, exactly like Brian Gill says. So if you guys are in, or Brian Hill, if you guys are, if you guys love Brian Hill, make sure you do like the stream subscribe over 200 people watching um, three people yell at each other. Uh, it's always fun. Uh, do like subscribe to the channel, but uh, where do I hope this turns out? Yeah. How do you think it ends? I hope it ends in, in, 130 million in a player and 160 million in cash personally that's gonna get me a lot of heat i know it's not gonna be a popular position um i don't want harry kane to stay if he's not gonna do it because what i like just like bob said every time he misses a header every time he just he goes absent in a game this season it's done now it's done it's 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 over right the romance is is dead right it's like when you cheat on a girl every time she goes to the grocery store you're like where are you going who are you mean who are you texting? You know what I mean? Like the once the trust is gone, you might as well just break up. Mm, I I don't necessarily like completely disagree with what you're saying, but is there not a scenario where you could say, you know, he ends up staying? Because remember, it's been a long time since we had fans in the stadium as well, right? It, there, there's a lot of different ways that this could go, but. If Kane if Kane stays and there are some something has been something gets done to make amends, whether it's him firing Charlie Kane or coming out with a statement, or even time time can heal all wounds as well. It just depends how how nuclear this goes from here on out. But I do see a path to Harry Kane staying and rehabilitating his image and his legacy at Tottenham Hotspur. I can see. Uh, him banging in a hat trick in early November against an, a, a London rival and fans genuinely being back to worshiping him. You know, I can see that. Uh, I don't, I don't disagree. Like, I think I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be opposed to, to him being sold for the right price. Like you said, 130 plus like Laporte or, or 160 straight cash. Um, yeah, it just, it's just a shit situation, you know, because if if Manchester City do this double swoop for Jack Grealish and Harry Kane, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be years of this. You know how how is anyone gonna knock them off the mantle? You know it's gonna make it so much less enjoyable to watch Premier League football. Um, really, I really hate I really hate this fucking the way the money has ruined this fucking game. You know what I mean? I hope he stays, man. I hope he stays. He's he ends up you know golden boot winner again and and scores left right and center he's going to have a rough ride of course he is there's going to be questions going his way but i look at the likes of rooney and and gerard who were very vocal in, in wanting to leave their own clubs and they got a bit of shit over it but you know what they came back they turned it around rooney ended up being player of the year that season or the season after gerard is still classed as, as king i'd go as far as ronaldo he was the he he, he was everyone in the uk in England, hated Ronaldo after the Euros with the whole uh, wink gate and everything else. And uh, we got uh, Rooney sent off. But you know what, mate? He came back and everyone bowed to his skill, his confidence, his stature, turned it round. Yeah, OK, he didn't get the ha uh, hate within Man United, but the rest of the country were anti-Ronaldo and we all bowed to his superior 
skill set and and the, and the and the player he was, and he turned around and, and massive massive kudos to to his uh, his personality, and and I think Kane needs to do that as well. I hope he stays. There's a part of me that still is still holding on to the fact I think he will stay, and I hope he stays because let's be honest, we're a weaker team without him, and he is the best. And I honestly mean this above Lewandowski. He is the best striker in the world in my eyes. I really believe that. He's the best striker in the world. Forget to get the numbers that he's getting with Tottenham Hotspur Football Club in comparison to Mbappe at PSG or Lewandowski at Bayern. Mate, he is the best striker in the world. We should be begging in, internally that he that he stays. Not condoning what he did. I think we, what he did was a shit show. But I can understand why he did it. Um, but I hope he stays. I pray that he stays at our football club. Yeah, I don't yeah. disagree with you. I mean, uh, if he stays, he stays. I just think it's going to be a bad... I, I, I just don't see it. I don't see this next season, if he stays, being happy-go-lucky. Yeah. Right? Like, for me, like, if if he would have showed up to training, even if he would have put in a transfer request, look, that's official. Let's tell the club, I want to go. Right? If he would have put in the transfer request... And he would have showed up to training and done his, and do whatever. I would, have, and, but he ended up staying for the ne- the next season or whatnot. Um, I, I, w- I wouldn't have had a hard time. But but pitching a fit, not showing up to work, you know, doing these other things. Like if it, if it was a, even if it was split fifty fifty to a point like you either sign these amount of players, right, these specific caliber of players, or let me go. Right, you've got one or the two options. If he was doing something to better the club in it instead of himself, you know what I'm saying specifically. Um, I, I would be a little bit more thing. Not that I don't think that he deserves to go out and win trophies on his own for his own self selfishly. I, I, I nobody denies. That. I don't think there's a single right. Spurs fan out there that says that we. Would. I just don't like the way that he's gone about it. I think it's kind of, it's kind of. Childish. I really what, do. I think what do you childish. guys? What do you guys make of the uh, report that came out this morning that that Kane thinks that um, basically like people are overreacting a little bit? I think surprised, probably, mate. I think uh, I think he's, he's he's probably surprised with the backlash. Who's overreacting? He thinks he thinks I don't know. It's just he we're just... overreacting. That's insulting. I, that would make me no, mad. No, if he no, said the word wasn't overreacting, was it? It was. Um... Blown yeah, I, out forget, of propos- I forget the, the exact word. Yeah. He, he said it's been blown out of... Some, blown out of uh, proportion. Yeah, something like that. He, um, I did, January. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I honestly think he's surprised by the backlash. Um, um, I, th- I, th- I think he might have... Right, so that was, it, that was in The Athletic, apparently. Harry Kane intends yeah. to resume training later this week. He feels the situation has been blown out of proportion. What what could that possibly mean? Aside, from, like obviously he's he's looking at what's going on. Well, the, uh, if he's looking at some, he's, he's looking at blown. the media and he's looking at the social media reaction. Does yeah. this does this mean that maybe his intentions aren't as uh, yeah. extreme as we think they are? Probably, and and he's probably surprised. But when you think of it, if if, if the reason is he wants to leave and he's not turned up, it's a, probably the biggest person who's come out and said indirectly Enoch out leave you out That's but what thing. i'm saying what i'm saying what i'm saying is if it's blown out of proportion then come out and say it's blown out of Clarify proportion it. come yeah. out and say yeah i want to leave but i'm not not at work because I'm, I'm 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 protesting right that's what i'm saying if he didn't come in for a protest to protest if that was his intent right i'm not coming because i'm trying to force daniel levy to do what i want right instead of what's in my contract i think that's poor if he just wants to leave and he's willing to, I think it's better to run a, to win hearts and minds than to go out there and, and break windows and light cars on fires. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't do well with, with, with forceful stuff. I just don't. It doesn't fit my personality. If you want to boycott, like if you're, if, if you're doing like a company or something, you're not going to buy their merchandise a little different than not showing up to work right like i would be more i would rather sit down if i worked for a company like say i worked for a car company or something like that i would rather go sit down and talk with my bosses than than stage a walkout or a strike
Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just the way that I that I deal I deal with things. He's still a, he's still an employee, isn't he? Um, he's you know, regardless of his of his fines, uh, Enoch are, are still playing are paying or Tottenham Hotspur are still paying his uh, wages. So yeah, I just think it could have been all prevented. I think the the him not turning up has, has added clouds to the whole scenario and, and a lot of mist and a lot of smoke uh, where everyone, all the fan base trying to look through and trying to find a reason. Whereas if he turned up, we wouldn't have any of that. We wouldn't have any of that. And if he'd come out with a statement saying, I'm looking at my options, you guys probably seen the uh, statement from that uh, West Brom Shelwin player, Pereira, what he's come out with, Pereira. Mate, he's, he's literally told of fans that, thank you very much for the two years, I'm off. But the way he's worded it, the way he's put it down, saying I'm always, I'll always, I've always given my hundred percent coming into training, and everything else. But I've come from a humble beginning. I'm 25 years old. I've had an offer that's going to change my life. I, I cannot, I'll never forget, forget. The guy's been there for two years, and people are singing his praises and saying, "Fantastic, yeah. you go and with our wishes, etc." Let's move um, this to Romero, our new signing. Thank God. Um, he. <laughs> He was supposed. He wanted to go. He wanted to go. Right. He wanted to come to Tottenham. He wanted to leave Atlanta. He wanted to come to the Premier League. His club was balking at it. Right. Gasparini was like, "No, he's gonna be our player." Da 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 da. He came to training, talked to him, did what he was supposed to do, and then he's on his way over. Why? Because we showed them the money. Paid far more than I ever thought Daniel Levy. <laughs> I never thought he would actually give them what they want after they changed the price like four times on us, right? So why can't Harry Kane do that? Why can't Harry Kane do that? Why can't Harry Kane come to work, push City, call them, right? Because it's kind of like this. It's kind of like Harry Kane's in the middle. He's kind of like he's kind of like that guy who who's got a girlfriend who's maybe not that good looking. And he's trying to hook up with this hot chick, but the hot chick's really not that interested in him. And so he ends up, you know, then he ends up, you know, without any girlfriend at all. I think that's how this, this could very well end up, dude. And, you know, it's just, I don't, I don't deal. I don't like the way that he's handled it. I think it's been very, 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 very negligent, irresponsible. Not very smart, not very bright. Yeah, we'll just have to see how it plays out. You know, it's entirely possible he shows up to training, brushes okay, everything. Okay, so wait, 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 hold on. I have a challenge for evidence here. Will, can you show me ev any evidence that Harry Kane missed training because he's engineering a transfer? What do you mean by that? He's asking. He's asking if there's any evidence that that Harry Kane is trying to push a move out. Would he have been docked wages if he would have missed training for health reasons? Would he have been docked a week's pay for missing training yesterday if it was COVID related? Well, you're muted, Bob. I mean, the expectation is that you were supposed to be at work on this Would day. you be docked pay based if, on... If, if he showed up without a decent reason, then I think, yeah, he would be. But I, I, I know what you're saying. I don't even know for sure if he has been. So there there's you been, go. There's, there's your evidence. Reports. Would he have been docked pay if he had just decided to stay on vacation too long, though? Probably. So either way, he's just... So he either well, did it because he wants to push Daniel Levy to leave the club, or he did it because he wanted to stay at the Bahamas longer than he should have. I'm just, I'm just saying, like in relation to the question that he asked, I'm not sure if that is like a hundred percent evidence. If, if it's, if it's not, then um, we would have got clarification by now. If it wasn't because of a transfer, it was something else. There's absolutely no reason in the world why Spurs or the Hurricane camp wouldn't put a statement out just to clarify it, staying home because of COVID, because of illness, because of uh, um, uh, COVID directives, uh, 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 you know, whatever, whatever. But the fact they haven't has given us, uh, I'll say us, span, uh, uh, I was going to say spans there, <laughs> Spurs fans, that's a good one. 
Um, and obviously that's the, that's the reason why he has. And there's no one can blame the fans for putting two and two to get uh, together to get to get that. Um, and I think it's there wouldn't be any. There's no logical reason for him not to turn up apart from trying to push through a transfer. We might be completely wrong, but there's absolutely no reason we could point. We could, we could look at someone and say, no, you shouldn't be thinking like that because the fan base got every right to think think that. I mean, so many of the articles in The Athletic would be as much evidence as you could provide without speaking to Harry Kane yourself. Mm. So if, if 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 a newspaper like The Athletic, right, that's not a small paper, and it's not a paper that tends to be, it's not the sun, right? They've obviously have gotten quotes from someone in Harry Kane's camp. Sky Sports always refer to that. We have been we've been um, uh, advised uh, thoroughly a report by, outside by someone within way. the Kane camp. Yeah, exactly. And if, they, the if is, that narrative <clears throat> can go out, why can't something else go out? What um, I'm seeing my, is Tottenham are likely to find Harry Kane. Have they? Has it actually said that Tot, that Harry Kane has been fined? It's all a guessing game. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. Which I guess, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all a guessing game. What a garbage. I mean, the athletics girl. the athletics statement on why he missed was protest. Harry yeah. Kane has missed training due to protest. It'd be interesting to know what, what, what has been blown out of proportion. What is it? What is what is it the thing? That has been blown out of proportion. Is it the transfer? Is it him not turning up? Is it is it uh, uh, the fan base who who brought? That's that's what I'm really interested. In. That that has apparently come from the can Kane uh, uh, um, uh, uh, cap. So it'd be interesting to see what exactly it has been blown out of proportion. I don't know if we'll get clarity on that. I'd love some clarity on what has been blown out of proportion. Will we find out? I don't know. I don't understand why people are wanting to deny that Harry Kane is doing this for transfer reasons. Like, are there well, seriously people who are out there who are saying, who think, well, like January 1st here? Right. You, do, are you trying to say that he has no intention of leaving Tottenham Hotspur and he's just, he missed training because uh, he, he, he had, his plane was late leaving the Bahamas? I mean, is that what you're insinuating? Because I think my position, the position that I hold, is far more rational than that position. I mean, which do you think is more likely? That Harry Kane has no intention of leaving Tottenham Hotspur, he plans to play for the badge next season, or, and he's, he, he didn't show up to training because he, his, uh, his daughter wanted to go swimming one more day at the Bahamas. Did you guys see Graham Roberts on on Twitter yesterday mm. calling people idiots because he was undergoing COVID protocols? Uh, but he knew those protocols. I, I understand the difference between this year and last year. The difference between this year and last year is that he knew those protocols in advance. Yeah, I, I agree with you. For me, it's it's a case of well, an example of where where there is smoke, there is usually fire, and in this mm. case, there is a ton of black smoke so uh yeah where's the evidence that kane is not leaving well where's the evidence kane wants to leave his own mouth well he hasn't put in a transfer request and uh has he has has he actually said out loud in an interview or uh, no, the, been, yeah. been quoted Gary as saying no, I, no, no. The, 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 the Gary Neville. I don't look at that as, as being publicly saying that he wants to leave the club. You have to rewatch it again. Yeah, I don't think he's ever in that state that I'm. You know, I'm. The only evidence is is him not turning up for training. That's the only evidence we can we can point on. That's the only fact. Every statement that Charlie has put out all summer long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, but there's nothing in there that will, that will say, if we want to look at facts, the fact is he didn't turn up for training. And that because would it, suggest the logic, logical um, uh, reason for that would be he's trying to push through. I can't understand what other reason 
he would not turn up for uh, turn up for training. And if it wasn't for that reason, why wouldn't you come out and say it? Like, you know the shit show that's gone on. Yeah. Why would you not come out and say? Exactly. So there's the I want to stay. All it takes, one tweet. I ain't going nowhere, baby. Maybe that's going to happen. And it's done. Hopefully. Hopefully. Just put it. Yeah, after he stomps his feet and doesn't get his way, and then now he's got to make right for it. Like, that makes me even more mad. That doesn't make me more happy, right? If you do everything that you can in order to get one, right? Oh, come on. People are just being naive now. So what, what you, what's caught your eye now? Fix NBA 2K1. This is naivety. I don't think he'll leave this season, but it's not because he doesn't want to leave. It's because Daniel Levy won't let him go. I'm not saying I don't. I I have I have already come out and said several times. I don't think that Harry Kane will leave this season. I don't think he will. I don't think he'll get his move. But what I'm concerned about is him stomping his feet and acting like a child when he doesn't get his way, which ends up causing more drama and more heartache. And for Pete, in this evidence of him not showing up for training is evidence that Harry Kane has it in his character to stomp his feet and pout. When he doesn't get his way. That's my concern. But then I, I think it's very naive to think that Harry Kane doesn't want to leave Tottenham Hotspur. Just want someone to go up to him and say, stop being silly. Stop being silly. Honestly, there's no need for this. Get your head together and just do, just keep up your side, your side of your image. Don't let people question your character. Yeah, it's just it's, it's so difficult, that, though, Bob. That. It's so difficult with the precedent that's been set with with players who have left this club in the past as well. What's you know, Bob look at, look at look at look at Christian Eriksen, how long he had to wait to get his move. Look at Serge Aurier, who's still at the club, right? If if even if Harry Kane was thinking next year, I want to secure a transfer. In some respects, it would make sense for him to begin the process now, and and. As much as what you've said about like making a statement and making his intentions clear and everything, if in his heart of hearts he knows that the move won't happen this year, regardless of what he does, he might be just laying the groundwork for for her, for an escape next summer. So, well, it's just it's just it's really it's a really hard situation to parse out, and it's hard when you're left to to read between the lines like we are, you know, and you still have all these opposing opinions and no comments a comment, man. I'm sorry. No comment is a comment. There's the old adage, silence speaks louder than words. Oh, yeah, for sure. But So just because he hasn't come still, out and said, I want to leave himself. Tottenham Hotspur, is, doesn't mean that, is, that there it's is a lot, it's a lot no easier evidence. To, it's a lot easier to backtrack over a no comment than it is to a statement like a transfer request or a public statement, right? Yeah, if you're a cheesy politician. It's a, it's a mess. It's just a mess, right? It's a hurtful. It's a, it's a hurtful anger towards him at the moment, rather than a rage, raging anger towards him. I, I think a lot of Spurs fans, understandably, didn't expect it from him. Are surprised by what he's done, and hurt by what he's done, and I think that slowly simmered into, uh, into anger. And 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 I, and I do believe. Some for Spurs fans are confused. How how are we feeling about Kane? Why are we feeling like this about Kane, our man? I've tried why, to segue why, that way like four times already. <laughs> 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 Just, can you talk about Romero now, please? Yeah, I've tried to no, segue no, that no, way a couple no. times. So um, big up Ishak, big up Ishak. You know, piss off, mate. Um, um, but yeah. But yeah, and yeah, while you're I, pissing I, off, I hit that subscribe and like button yeah, as well. Yeah, piss off and, and subscribe as well. Yeah, that's it. That little red button down there, make it make it go gray. We don't like okay. here at, at THSC Rights, we don't like red. Um no. especially Arsenal red. That's why I'm glad this this US kit, you can tell it's not quite it does a little bit Arsenal reddish. red. 
yeah. red, but it's not Arsenal red. It's more like a, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I've always got the subscribe logo next to me, which is pure red and white, which I don't like, but there you go. Oh, that's yeah. YouTube for you. That's their colors. What are you going to do? Um, but go ahead and smash that. Smash that like. I haven't even looked, to be honest with you, how many likes the video has. There's been like 200 people watching for the last hour, so. Big up, everyone. Big up. 74 likes. Let's get that to 150 at least, for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Paul Kane official. Um, why is your stuff being hidden? I hope this sorts out because people are. He used dickhead. Uh, <laughs> if you use Reed. if you use swear words, we have to. Uh, <clears throat> no, the, it does it all comment. by itself. Yeah. So yeah, if, we'll if, hide it automatically. Yeah. So if we don't catch the comment, uh, some some of them don't get shown, but. Dickhead. Yeah, or use stuff. I had to do that. I have to do that because you get, um, you get. I'm I'm trying to go through and improve most of them if I can. Um, there are. Uh, the, Matt the, Hayes just tweeted, um, saying if Sky Sports just tweeted we had a deal agreed, then immediately immediately deleted. I'm not sure what deal he's uh, on about. What deal are you on about, Matt? He says, they, or he says they tweeted again. again. There's lots happening today. Mm. Looks like rumors that Ben Davies will be next one out the door. Jeff at Tanganga, maybe Tanganga. Long Gallo Tasseray. Yeah. And there's been an absolute ton of comments that we've missed. If we miss your oh, comments, man. guys, even if it's just like in a dollar super chat or something, let us know because it's really, really hard when we're chatting here to see all this. What do you think about this comment from David? Will and Cody, do you think Sun will go to the next level if Kane left? Will, I'll let you go first. If Kane left, would Sun go to the next level? I think it depends on who we got in, right? If he has someone that can feed him, um, I think there's a possibility for him to get um, twenty plus goals a season. Um, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure because, like, it's, Sun's level last year was so incredibly high. I felt like, you know, like uh, up until he got hurt there, even after he got hurt, he came back and he was still producing, even though he looked like he had kind of, he was protecting himself a little bit. In terms well, I mean, of the first half injury. of the season, the first half of the season was primarily because Harry Kane was feeding the ball to him, right? He was getting the service, right? Yeah. And we so would, we would the quite second literally... half of the season, Kane wasn't getting his, that giving him that service. We would and quite literally have to replace Kane with both a striker who can draw the the attention of of defenders and uh, probably a creative midfielder who can create those chances for Son to run in behind. Right? Well, I think we have the creative midfielder. I just think he's playing far too deep. If we could get Endon Belly playing Endon higher Belly, up yeah. up the pitch, I I really think you know that's why. Like if we send Skip out on loan, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be angry. Oh, so mad. That will make me so mad. So mad. If we if we loan skip and don't sell Harry Winks, I am gonna be freaking irate with this. Let's loan player. Harry Winks. Why are we loaning Skip? What is the purpose of it? Why would he not be in line to receive regular playing time at this point? Yeah. The, he's you know, far better than Winks. I don't care yeah. if he's not proven in the Premier League. He should be in blah, that double blah, pivot blah, with Hoybier. Yeah. That's that, that, that should push that should push. And Dombele further up the Well, pitch. there is no double pivot if we're playing in a 4-3-3. If that's what Nuno is going to be putting us in, um, maybe Have that's... Have we played a 4-3-3 in, in preseason, though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we haven't it, played it, a 4-2-3-1 since... Depends we, on a lot of things. Um, We haven't played a 4-2-3-1, which is good. I, I'm so fed up with the 4-2-3-1. It was kind of a flash-in-the-pan system, to be honest with you. Um. It was hot for probably like 10 years. And then, you know, it, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of it. To be honest. I, th I think I'd be happy if Sun maintained his level from last year. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's expecting quite a bit. I don't even know what the next level looks like for, for Sun, especially if he's going to continue to play on the wing. You know, that's I think true. if he was going to, like, statistically speaking, if he was going to start to rack up more goals, I think he would have to be moved into a striker position. Mm -hmm. Yeah um so yeah. yeah we'll we'll have to wait and see but yeah it's just hard there's always a there's always a couple a striker, of players that we get, he's not yeah, a striker yeah, no. yeah he's not a striker. always a couple of players that we get carried away with at the beginning of the season i think lucas got a really big season 
Um, I think uh, he, he might add a few few goals, especially for playing through the number 10. He's not the answer, of course, right, if we can get a better player in that position. Yeah, but he has looked, he has looked good. He was our best number 10 last season. But uh, Sonny, yeah, uh, it's difficult to see how he can improve on on not uh, there was let's 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 be honest there was a a lull in his season last season where he was overplayed and he went over that injured and he did lose a bit of confidence and a bit of uh fitness fitness could be down to jose's uh training methods but um yeah yeah we all hope yeah he, he started the season on fire had a bit of a lull and then finished it off with a a bit of form but not, not he can never reach those early season highs so um but yeah, he might feel like if Kane goes, he might feel it's all on him, and that might bring that bring out the best in him, uh, regardless of where he plays. But yeah, I, I think in a way you probably lose more out of him by playing him directly as a striker than what you would do if if you carried him playing down the left. But let's uh, let's wait and see. It's all depending on what kind of personnel we bring in or or personnel that stays. Yeah, so like for me, like I I I just think that. Look, even even if Kane goes, I really only think that we really need one one that that like that Vlahovic guy. Like I'm not Jack, so I'm not going to pronounce it, pronounce his name good. But um, Vlahovic, uh, Vlahovic, Vlahovic, Vlahovic. Yeah. Um, he's he looks pretty good, to be honest yeah. with you. And at his price, which isn't crazy expensive, we were talking about buying him before letting Henry Kane go. Um. If you were to add, if you were to put a little bit of that money into one really good kind of CF, like a center forward type player, like a second striker type midfielder, um, who's a little bit more creative. Um, I mean, look, look, look at Liverpool. Firmino's or- horrible. Yeah, and they kill. Why? Because they have two outstanding wingers who are that play inverted. You know, it's basically cool. three across the top. You're gonna play four three three. You could do a clop type system, right? You got Horberg, who's the Henderson, right? You know the rest of their midfield is fa- is fairly sharp. I think our m- midfield would be stronger than than Liverpool's. All we would need to do is to sign a sun worthy, sun class right winger, and we would be fine with a Vlahovic type striker. Now oh, Martinez is a good one. There's even talks of you know he's considering the old good old. Fashion four four two, which would be great. Two strikers up front, uh, you know, Danny Ings alongside, uh, which would be, uh, yeah, would be a good. Shout. I don't think losing Kane is the end all. End all. If we replace people in the right spots, it could actually even improve our team. To be honest with you, I really well, do. When, when was the last like time? That. When was the last time? I mean, aside from what Neymar and Mbappe. When was the last time a player was sold for the kind of money that we would want for Harry Kane and it actually worked out in the buying club's f- favor? You know, Coutinho was a disaster. Hazard was a disaster. It's it's not it's not very often that that a player gets sold for north of 150 million pounds or euros yeah. and it ends up being a good value. Some sometimes like like the the Cristiano Ronaldo to Juventus, I mean He's such a global, a globally marketable player. There's so many more secondary and tertiary revenues that come in with a player like that. I'm not sure Harry Kane fits into that mold necessarily, or that Manchester City uh, fits into that same bracket as a, a club like Juventus. Um, yeah, there's definitely an argument. There's definitely an argument to be made that that it would be smart, smart to sell him now if you got the right if if you got the right price. Genuine question to both of you and the guys in the comments. Haaland is going to be available next season and Mbappe is going to be free next season. If you are going to spend 150 in Man City, although I think Harry Kane's a better player, isn't wouldn't you test the water with, with Dortmund and, and PSG for both those players? 150, I believe, would get you at least one of them. I don't know. Well, maybe I'm just, what, what do you think? The, prob- the problem with with Holland going to Man City is that the relationship between Pep Guardiola and Mino Raiola Course, is toast. Yeah, yeah. Is toast. Yeah. That's that's almost a non-starter, and uh, it's kind of sad. I mean, not not that I would want Man City to get Holland, but yeah. uh, the, the, I just mean in terms of the amount of power that agents possess yeah. in the negotiation process uh, is it, it, staggering at this point. I think Holland. 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if Holland ended up at Chelsea this summer as opposed to him playing for Dortmund one more summer and then going for a much lower fee. Um, Chelsea are going to look to capitalize on their Champions League victory. They're going to want to bring themselves into the conversation for the Premier League title, which they were not necessarily a part of last year, despite uh, a big turnaround after they sacked Lampard and brought in Tuchel. Um, yeah. So so it's diff- It's difficult. And, and Mbappe, I think, is destined to be a Real Madrid player. So yeah. it's... Uh, yeah, this is, probably, this is probably why we're in this dilemma is because Man City are looking at like a price tag that Daniel Levy has set for Harry Kane and are thinking that's it. It's he's not he's not he's never going to be worth that much to us. Yeah, uh, they're not going. He's never going to be worth that much to Manchester City. But the reality is that's what he's worth to Tottenham at this exactly. point in time. So uh, pay up or shut up is is where we're at. And we'd, yeah. we'd, I just don't want to get sucked into the Kane thing again. What do you no, what do you no, make no. of this this comment from Fix NBA 20, 2K21? Uh, heard reports about Adama. How would you feel about this? I'm not interested in uh, Triori at all, personally. I mean, when you look at his uh, football reference page, it basically tells the, the story that, th- that your eyes will tell watching him as well. He's basically a player that can dribble and he has very little to offer other than that. Um, I saw one person on, on Twitter the other day seriously saying that he would love to have Troy over here because he's a fun player. But in terms of like giving us a better chance to win football matches and put ourselves in the conversation for trophies, Troy just doesn't do that. Um, I, I would, and, and the price that's been quoted, right? I saw one price say 45 million pounds. Yeah. That's insane. That's a, that's absolutely insane. We could get yeah. two or three players of better quality that could help us right now for that price than it would be if we were to give it to, to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Just mm. doesn't make any sense to me personally. I don't I hate to, I don't want to pour cold water on your, your take no, here mate. if you're a, if you're a no, fan. I to- to- totally agree. He's, he's, uh, he's basically Eric Mello with muscles and a, a bit more pace. There's no end product. Um, it wouldn't be an upgrade on Lamella. That's all I'm going to say. You know, yeah. he, he wouldn't be an upgrade. Um, yes, he had a, he had a good season, uh, I think, before last, but it was his his, his, his crossing were exactly the same, but he had a quality, they had a quality striker up front in Jimenez who was taking, uh, it was, it was taking on his, his crosses. You, you put a different striker up front and we saw what happened last season. And the biggest thing is Spain were were two one down or one nil down against. They needed a goal against Italy. You'd think one of the fastest players in the tournament would be a, a great outlet to to uh, change the game, and he wasn't even looked at. So um, I think that kind of says says it all. Great pace. There's no denying, and he always causes us problems, Co. Doesn't he? He's always when he plays against Tottenham, he's always caused problems with his pace. But there's never been any end, end, end product. If it went through one on one, oh, I'm so going to regret this because it's going to happen this season. But if it goes through one on one on a goalkeeper or or is is him out wide with the strike in the middle, there's no confidence he's going to find his man. So, no, for me, great pace, mate. But um, yeah, he's had one good, good, good season, that, and, I, and I truly believe that was down to Jimenez rather than him because we've seen what he's like with the uh, with average strikers, are you silver? Yeah, uh, I just want to respond to Paul's comment here about uh, you know people not realizing that City players' wages are very, very high. Harry Kane's on £200,000 a week right now, and there's only two players on the active roster for Manchester City who are being paid more than that, and that's Raheem Sterling and Kevin De Bruyne. So if we were going to get £120 million cash as part of a deal, plus e- even if it was Kevin De Bruyne, uh, there's we we certainly would be in a position to afford those wages. I think the bigger issue with including players in a deal is that the players that we would want probably don't want to come to Spurs right now. Yeah. You know, uh, I've seen a lot of people are big fans of uh, Laporte coming in as part of a deal with cash. Uh, there's people who would argue for Mares or for Nathan Ake. All of those players make less than Harry Kane, so so you would be yeah. replacing one player with. Now, of course, you would have to replace Harry Kane as well, unless you were getting a striker. But uh, I don't think that would be an issue personally. It's we a myth, a, isn't it, Code? It, it is a bit of a myth. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't pay the wages. We do now. So I, I don't just don't know why. Wages, like, if we were if we were if we were receiving nine figures for yeah, for exactly. Harry Kane, how we would we would be in a position to not actually afford yeah. the wages? It's not uh, not 
Not my position. Uh, Will L with the super chat, $5. In my opinion, Kane wants the move to City this summer because Holland and Mbappe are available next. He'd be stuck another two years. Yeah, it's uh, it's entirely possible. Again, it depends. I don't think either one of those players would be an option for Manchester City for reasons that we just discussed. Uh, Mbappe looks destined to play for Real Madrid and Holland's agent uh, and Pep Guardiola are like water and oil. They don't mix very well. So City will still be in the same situation next summer. I mean, if, if I'm Manchester City, I'd probably be looking at Danny Ings, if I'm being honest, because yeah. Danny Ings would be a good fit for them. Just he, he, he provides a lot of what they're missing in terms of a, a natural finisher. And maybe he wouldn't have to – because he wouldn't have to play every game. You know, they, they do so much rotation – even, even with uh, the amount of European competition and cup competitions, mm. Danny Ings wouldn't be having to play more than once a week at most. So it's possible that he would be able to stay healthy. Um, now, of course, we're taking advantage of Will's absence right now to do some Danny Ings prop on his yeah, channel. Too, yeah. This channel this channel loves Danny Ings. Everyone yeah, smash yeah. a like if uh, you love this channel because we love <laughs> Danny Ings. But, uh, yeah, I don't see I, – I can understand the logic behind Kane wanting to move this summer. The other, the other aspect of Kane wanting to move this summer, you know, he's 28 now. Who's going to want to pay what Daniel Levy? Daniel Levy has the ability, as much as he can price people out of a purchase this summer, he will be able to price people out of a purchase next summer and the summer after Absolutely. that as well. You know, Absolutely. and Harry Kane, he's one, he's one injury away from from being stuck at Tottenham till the end of the contract at this point. So you can you can kind of see uh, the logic that he's using. But uh, what what are your thoughts on this super chat from Will L? Yeah, I, I think, I don't know, I can understand why, but I don't think it's a foregone conclusion if Carrie Kane stays, he's just going to be staying for one season. I honestly don't believe that. I think if he stays, when he's 29, and he'll still hold it, he, he's not going to devalue by £50 million over one season. Of course he's not. He'll still be, Daniel Levy will still be in a, in a position where he can still value him at £120 million. Of course he can at the end of the season. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. Oh, if Harry Kane give us one more year. No, no, no. And there's also the narrative that if he does stay one more year, we get the right personnel in. Romero finally gets confirmed. We we add the right personnel. And, to, and call me delusional, I think we'll challenge for the top four. If we get the right players in, Harry Kane stays, we'll challenge for the top four. And who knows how we do in one of the, uh, one of the, uh, in the, one of the cups. There wouldn't be any reason for Harry Kane to go. And that might be, you know what? I can see something something happening here. It'd just be, um, yeah, it'd just be, you know, a lining of, of stars that he wants to go, he ends up staying, and we end up being successful. That's the ideal thing, isn't it? So, no, no, I don't think Harry Kane staying means he's just staying for one more season. I don't think that's a foregone conclusion. I do believe that if he stays, he will be seeing out his career at Tottenham, or, or, or certainly most of his uh, remaining years. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's difficult because the thing is too man being a Tottenham fan is so hard sometimes because like <laughs> we've just gone and bought a top a top defender with lots of potential a young young yeah. guy who wants to be here we've dropped the 55 million euros or whatever on, on the player and and now like the rumor mill is flying and it's like where where is all the it, it's hard like on one hand as a fan should I really care about where the money comes from or how it gets spent not not necessarily, but it's hard to look at all the the players that we're being rumored as interested in. Like we're being linked with with Vlahovic, who is going to come yeah. at a hefty price of yeah. upwards of fifty million euro. You know, we've been linked with uh, a AOR. We've been linked with so many players, and I know that that's Paratici's nature. But it just why why <laughs> I sure wish that I could just look at it as being like, oh man, our owners are finally caring and they're changing yeah. the way, as opposed to like. The, the dread that I feel that, that yeah. we're already spending the What's Harry the ulterior money, motive? You know? like, yeah. We'll have to wait and see, you know, like it, yeah. as much as it is an unlikely scenario, you have to hold out hope that, that things are actually changing at Tottenham Hotspur and they're tr doing their best to, to put, give, give one more solid go at, at, at winning something with Harry Kane at, as a centerpiece and building around him properly but it is hard not to think of what the worst it always is. You always have that feeling of the trap door being ready yeah, to, to be released yeah, to, underneath you. Yeah. Again, it's a myth code as well, isn't it, mate, that we haven't spent money. We have spent money in, in, in part of transfer markets. 
gone by, but we've never spent it on the the caliber of players that we really needed. You know, it's all very well bringing in a an Endembele and a, and a Roden and and uh, you know other players that we could think of, Bergwines. You know, just those three we could have we could have brought in a Skriniar, a Bruno, and a and a Grealish, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. And that wouldn't have been, and that wouldn't have been collectively. That wouldn't have been a, uh, that much of a million million pounds extra on what we, we spent on those players. So, um, yeah, there's always going to be that sense of what's the ulterior motive or what's what's leaving doing this because we've had past twenty years of of a guessing game. But we hope that bringing in Romero is the start of something. I did say I want Romero in a because he's a quality player, but b because of a, a statement signing. We've not had a statement signing for goodness. He is that Skriniar. He is that Dybala. He is that uh, Bruno. He is that Grealish signing uh, that finally got over the line. Oh no, no, no! He's not got over the line. He's not held up the shirt yet uh, till he's, till they're holding the shirt. Uh, but um, we 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 hope that's a that's a start of something, and and we need to carry on that ascendancy. We're, 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 it's a it's a set up and take notice um, uh, uh, signing, certainly from Tottenham's point of view, and we just need to say, look, this is where we are right now. This is the caliber of playing players we're signing. On to the next. Get the Halovic in. Go and get um, uh, a, a quality uh, midfielder in. Go and get another quality defender in or two. If Tanganga's going out to Galatasaray and we've lost Toby already, we need two quality defenders uh, to come in, be it a Tommy Arsu or a Milenkovic, which I think Milenkovic is probably going to Atlanta, but we need to. So, um, yeah, we just hope we don't rest on our, our laurels now that we've brought uh, Romero in and everything solved because we're still... Numbers wise, we're 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 a weaker squad, and especially if Tanganga goes out. So, um, yeah. yeah, and and Paul makes a good point here. There might be a stadium, there might be a sponsorship deal in place for the stadium. Yeah. We've been waiting for that. There was a rumor about a month ago that that they were getting close to a deal, and it might be announced before the start of the season. So that might be why there's suddenly a bit a little bit of yeah. an influx. But you look at the way that other clubs are operating too. Other clubs that that bring in less money from the commercial side of things but are still spending in in ways that we maybe haven't up until today i guess um a lot of clubs will probably be looking at this season as being the season where they get a return of a certain amount of revenue and uh if if, if tottenham are going to be aggressive and take some risks and spend some money before they earn it uh it could be to the benefit of our squad so uh, you know mm. let's hope that with uh, the addition of Paratici and uh, everything else that's been going on, that we're just ready to turn a corner and actually be yeah. a club that that makes big moves again and and, right. and does the best with it. But uh, yes, we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah. Where do you think? Where do you think? Like, how, how many more players do you think we get in the door at this rate? I mean. We still have a month left. I, I really would prefer players to have a proper betting in period, but I mean, we're we're too close to the start of the season to actually put them mm. through uh, proper training and get them up to speed on Nuno's tactics and whatnot. So we just have to accept that that's the situation that we find. Yeah. But do you see us bringing in another center back? Do you see us bringing in a right back? Do you see us bringing in a right winger? What are you What are your thoughts on that? Another frustration with all this Kane thing is it's it's going to distract us. Possibly, hopefully not, but um, and it shouldn't do really. But all our focus should be on strengthening our, our, our squad. We are weaker. Romero hasn't come in yet, and and he will obviously add uh, a lot more quality. But right now we're a lot weaker than what we finished last season with, with Lamella, Toby going, uh, the talks of Taganga going out that happened, Skip going out. I'm not understanding that logic there. You know we're. Uh, and Deadwood, we need to move out. We need to be careful because by selling so many dead Deadwoods and not bringing anyone in, we're just going to be uh, shitting numbers. So, yeah, without fail, we do need one more defender in. Although we've got numbers there, we do need one more quality. But it's about the Kane thing. Regardless of Kane staying or going, we need another striker. We need another striker in. Um, so, yeah, I'm expecting before the end of the window for Paratici to be a proper don to bring at least three more players in, at least three more players in. But it's dependent. If we're only bringing in two or three players and we're sending out five or six, which is very unlikely, I know, uh, it's going to be a bit not sure about it. We do need to weigh it up 
we do need to weigh it up and, and make sure we're not weak in numbers. Might be weak in quality, but we we'll certainly won't, don't want to be weak in or weak in numbers because we never know when we might need. If this if the so transfer good. if the transfer window ended today, how what, what would you rate it out of ten? Oh mate, it's not going to be great. Uh, with Romero, probably brings it up to about a, a three, a four. Really? Yeah. See, yeah, absolutely. I I. <laughs> This is where Twitter gets you because, you know, if you tweet out thoughts, <laughs> and there's, they, maybe they're, they lack a little bit of foresight. Me personally, at the beginning of the window, especially like the deeper we got into it, my thing was I was really adamant that we need to get rid of players as a priority, even if we weren't going to replace them with players that we purchased in the window mm. as well. You know, um, so I don't think that it's been a bad window, especially now that we've got our – center back who I don't want to like anoint as the solution to our problems. But for mm. me, it's a building block. It's a strong, strong foundation that we yeah. can build around. I didn't, I wasn't convinced at the beginning of the window that we were going to be able to attract, especially when, you know, the Kunde deal was going on and he was reported as saying that we were a second tier club and we were, you know, the number of players that weren't interested in coming here because of us being in the conference league and not in the champions league or even the Europa league. The fact that we have, uh, a defender who is clearly a, a, a player that Paratici rates so highly, brought him into the Juve system. You know, they put him out on loan with At Atalanta because they've got that epic center back pairing of Bonucci. Hey, we got yeah. the key. <laughs> well, I wonder who was up behind me in my bedroom. But Paratici is he's, he's made his signature signing for the window, I think, uh, unless he goes and surprises us even further. So, I, I give if, if the window ended today, I think I'd have to give it like a five or a five and a half. I, I couldn't give it a failing Ooh. grade because I just think it's so important that we get that that center back, that rock in the middle at the back that we can build around, and we we look like we've done that. So that's that's my thought. But well, if let me ask you the same question if you're if you're ready. If if yeah, if I was the, listening, but I was yeah dealing with the dude. If the transfer window ended today, what would you rate it out of ten? Today. Yep, a three. But Bobby said the same thing. Yeah, three. you've got to remember Romero. I don't. Romero is a quality player, but if he's playing alongside a Sanchez or a Dyer, I think it's it's it, to an extent there's a slight irrelevance in there because again, if we're doing job for two. It, it might destroy his confidence. I don't know how long he's going to be he could be able to do a two man job. One player code, unfortunately, in my eyes, will not change the season's quality. Is that's why I say we brought him in. We need to kick on now. And that's the only reason I'd give it a three. And the three <laughs> is purely down to Romero. No one else. Yeah. Uh, if Romero hadn't come in, I'd be giving it a zero. Yeah, me too. Because for me, like I've, I've made this clear, and I'll do it again. For me, there's two priorities. Two center backs and, and a right winger. Mm. Um, if, we don't sign, and that's a, if we don't sign those three positions, um, one quality of center back. My, my stipulation was one quality center back, one rodin S type center back, which we've got the quality now. All we need is the, you know, if we get a Tommy Asu or a Malik Avinch or something like that, um, that would be sufficient for me to fill that second center back role. And then we need a, a right winger. We have been without a right winger for oh, over a decade. Like a quality one, like a sun quality. I, I think even without Kane, I really do. I mean, look at how many teams you got City. They've been out, they were without a striker for most of the season last year. They won the league. Liverpool won the league without a quality striker. Um, if you have two two outside forwards who are, you know, Mane, Salah, Mares, you know, Torres, quality, you can get away without having it. I mean, Chelsea won. Chelsea won the Champions League without a striker last season. So Harry Kane is not a you know, death sentence for Tottenham Hotspur. It could end up being a life sentence, you know, a, a, a positive thing. You know what I mean? So if you have a, you know, if you have a striker that's decent enough, right, who I think is better, can be, has a good off the ball movement. Um, they so can like draw Dan, in like defenders. Danny Ings. <laughs> we, like Danny. We've not mentioned Danny Ings once. No, Danny. Some people in, that no, in but, the comments, I've been ignoring it. But, yes, Brian, but, but, Brian I mean, put, Hill is put, nothing. Putting it all aside, putting it all aside, Bill, right? Mm -hmm. 
putting all your uh, hate, your vile hate towards Danny Ings to one side. If we <laughs> signed a good right winger and we signed Danny Ings, okay. There you go. He could come in and do a job. That's what we're saying. It wouldn't yeah. be... He wouldn't be, and I agree with Code in a weird way. It probably would be better off at Man City as a first first choice striker than than coming. That's a, it's a weird one, isn't it? Um, uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm telling you right now, I see it. If we could spend, <laughs> if we could drop in and go in for because right winger, world class right wingers right now are not, or right midfielders aren't super expensive. Like even Bernardo Silva, I would take a hundred million in Bernardo Silva. I'd take a oh, hundred million, someone, Bernardo Silva. So. Start getting someone from our uh, hard, hard someone to, to come from Man City. You'd have to question their motivation as well. You know, going from a Champions League champ uh, uh, qualifier year in year out, a league title winner to coming to Tottenham Hotspur. Yes, we're a big club. We're a bigger club than Man City. But mate, you'd it, 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 wonder what it'd do to their motivation and their. Um, Oh, I don't know. It'd just be just be weird seeing a Man City uh, first team player wearing a Spurs, and that's that's wrong of us, and it's probably the re- reason why we're accepting mediocrity to to an extent. Um, Tommy yeah, Abraham, I, I, think uh, hard, I don't know if I take Tommy Abraham. I think you could get a lot no. better. You could, you could He's not find. a good finisher. I'd rather take that dude from uh, from Italy, uh, there's um what's his name oh man martinez mate there's chelsea going in for lukaku yeah the 400 million aren't they which is yeah. right so if lukaku's 100 million how could we ever accept 100 million for harry kane that's all i'm exactly. saying dude like you, you you could debate because of what lukaku did in in Serie A last season you know he scored quite a, a lot of goals there as well but come on now really 100 million Grealish, yeah, I, but I mean Grealish. Oh, Grealish, Kane's better than Grealish. Don't start. He's with better him. than Grealish, but it's not a huge jump. I would rather have. I'd, I'd say Grealish is worth more than Lukaku. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Especially with longevity, age, and everything else, hundred percent. And the fact he's done it in the Premier League, he's done it at international level as much as he was allowed to. Yeah, and whereas Lukaku missed it, he wasn't that great for Man United. He's not he a great really finisher. Wasn't. He's a, he's a one in four chance finisher, isn't he? My, my, my yes, dad always euro said. Euro pounds. You're yeah. talking like 10 million pounds. My dad it's always said a... the way to judge uh, a striker is when he's going through one on one, would you put 100 pounds on that striker to score a goal? Or, yeah. Harry Kane, yes. Harry Kane, yes. Uh, uh, Thierry Henry, regardless of what you thought of him, yes. Uh, Defoe, yes. Uh, Lukaku, no way. Um, I'd say, uh, uh, um, and there are many other strikers. That, Danny Ings, I'd put, I'd put money on, but Abraham, I wouldn't. Uh, Ollie Wat- Watkins, another one that everyone speaks on, I wouldn't. Bamford, I wouldn't put money on. So there's a there's an elite level who you know they're going to go one on one, they're going to score. Likes of Ronaldo. I still think we go out and buy oh, Ivan Tony. Yeah. I still think we could get Ivan Tony. Oh mate, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It'd be less than hundred million. Put it that way. Yeah, far less than hundred million. You could probably get, you could probably get him for forty five. Uh, yeah, even less, I think, mate. I think if you if we went in 30, 30, 30, 35, I think that would that would test the water. You really, you really think uh, Brentford would let it? Would let? I mean, who are they gonna replace him with? Probably somebody from, for they're cheap that'll turn out pretty good because they're brilliant yeah. analytically. <laughs> yeah. They like that money ball stuff over at Brentford. Um, I'm look. I'm excited What's, to watch Brentford play this this season. To be I honest am with too. You. Yeah. yeah, I am too. Yeah, I like the manager. Yeah, oh, I got. Yeah. I think I have Ivan Tony in my uh, first draft for the for the FPL stuff. Yeah, man. Um, It'll be interesting to see how he does this season. Too. I don't think he la- he lacks experience. Some people say that he's he lacks experience, but he came up. You know, played for Newcastle. Um, didn't really get a good shout. Um, immediately went. You know, on a couple loan spells that didn't necessarily work out. Ended up moving to a League Two side, then up to a champ or League One side, then to a Championship side, and then. Back in the prem, so I mean, he's 
Uh, I don't see why we would think Oliver Skip would be ready to make the leap to the Premier yeah. League after what he yeah. did in the championship with Norwich exactly. and not think that Ivan Tony is also ready. With two golden boots back to back, right? Golden he put, boot he, in he was one, putting up Nintendo and... stats last year, like yeah, it, it would, even the assists. Oh, it was, yeah. I think was, he was over 40 goal contributions. Yeah, so, uh, attack and returns wise, if he even honestly, does half of that in the Premier I would League. rather pay less for Ivan Tony than pay for Vlahovic. Because I think he would really? be cheaper than than Vlahovic. I thought Vlahovic was only well, like, be... like forty something million or something. Like no, that. they 45. want like they want like sixty million euros from what I've seen. Oh, yeah, fifty five. I think it works out at fifty something. The Tony would be cheaper. Um, and let's be honest, Vlahovic has only had one good season. Yeah, he's really Tony, he's, he's a little bit younger. Last season, he's a little I mean, bit yeah, younger. He's younger. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's younger. So yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, Tony has a hustle and, and bustle I think the championship is like from, exactly yeah the championship makes from, co man. from coefficient wise is like the seventh or eighth most challenging league in the world mm. so it's not it's not a you know bum bum league I think it's above even the Portuguese league as far as difficulty and players have done it at Delhi Alley we could look at Delhi Alley and it was a league league below he he knocked it out of the park. We look at Bamford. Yeah. He, he 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 he's he did bowl last season. Ollie Watkins, Watkins was okay. Yeah. Rafina, exactly. And then there's yeah. You mentioned Rafina. In fact, you you probably point a finger at quite a few of the Leeds uh, players who who've come up and, and done really really well. Phillips. Um Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I I think gone are the days where there was a massive gap between the 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 quality of the championship as a whole in comparison to. Uh, the Premier League, I think, is 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 wide, of of course. But sure. I don't think the quality of the player in some some of the players. No, let's the, put it this way: if you are if you're dominating the championship, you're a good Premier yeah. League player. If Absolutely. you are dominant in the championship, you're a good. Um, you won't look Premier out of place. Player. Yeah, no, definitely not. And Lee showed that, didn't they? Lee showed that. Yeah, and and uh, and, and and Tony, absolutely dominated the championship yeah i mean he was at like he even took like he even got injured and was out for i think a month or two and still won the golden boot in that league i mean he was up to like 30 something goals in the first half of the season i mean it was it was it was silly silly what's what's your thoughts on a lot of talk that um if, uh, if, Halvich, if he does come in there's a thought amongst uh uh, within Spurs, that they they play him and and Kane up front together. I always thought it was a little and large uh, combination. I, I don't know if that's. I mean, that would work. I don't mind. I to be honest with you, my favorite formation ever is a four-one-three-two, mm. which is basically a four-four-two diamond. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I love that formation. Yes. I really love that formation. And I think that it would fit. It really, if we were to play that formation, and maybe this is somebody, there are a couple of people in the chat who had mentioned a 442, or maybe it was Cody, I don't remember, uh, or Bob. I have, uh, I can't remember who said it, but somebody said it. And um, they, uh, that reduces the need for, if you have a quality in that double pairing, um, it reduces the need for for an outside uh, forward uh, goal scorer like a, a right winger or something like that. It doesn't be, that position becomes less important, um, which maybe they're thinking, and that's the reason why they're doing it. Uh, I prefer more. I my favorite position overall after that would be a three four three. I really like three at the back in a three four three yeah. when you have. I think Liverpool should switch to a three four three. I really do. And move uh, Robertson and um, and those guys up a little bit higher. Yeah, um, I think that would solve a lot of the um, problems that they had last season. I think I think Pet or uh, Klopp needs to, to to shuffle things up a bit. Hundred percent. And play more play more attacking wise. Hundred um, percent. Uh, well, uh, as you know, I uh, need to go, mate. Uh, I have uh, child duty. Uh, need to pop over and, and make sure they go to bed. Um, they're all waiting up for me. So, uh, big up, everyone. 
Cheers for having me on, mate. Big up code. Let's hope piss, we get some sort of yeah, piss off. Let's hope we get some sort of clarification on on Kane's position next couple of days. Oh, I'll, I'll be on anyway. Um, I'm on later on um, on a different stream about half nine, ten o'clock anyway. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Having me You're on always welcome, now. Bob. And I'm gonna add you in the in the uh, description here, and then that way people can, if you want to follow Bob Spur, um, go subscribe to Bob Spur TV. Um, you can find him on the channel main page or just search Bob Spur TV. And I'm right now in the middle of, uh, uh, putting it in the description here. Now that you have a thousand subscribers, Bob, I didn't know if you know this, but in titles or description, you can just hit at in the channel name and then people can, you can add it to that. All right. Yeah. Now that you're at a thousand, you don't have to put in the whole link. You can just at somebody and it pops up like a hashtag. So. I need, I need to get I need to get some uh, mods in, man. Because I'll tell you what, last Saturday was crazy. I was like, oh, yeah, you do. So I told you that, like when I was. Yeah, yeah I know, mate. I on, know. At I the beach, to, man. Yeah, I need to get that sorted. But cheers, come on, you Spurs. Piss off, Levy. Piss off, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bob. Thanks yeah. for coming on and helping helping Cody out while I was off handling getting a car key. So, where was it? Uh, it wasn't. I didn't find it. I had a new one made. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, now you'll find it. Yeah, and he he gave me he gave me an extra one. So now I have two, and now I've I've only ever had one. So. That's funny. I don't have well, the key fob anymore, but I do have the. Uh, the key. You can you can take your your Eric Lamella for a ride now. I can. But I'll tell you what, that car's been sitting there five years and uh, put the key in, turn it on, and it started up like a champ. Boom! Wow, batter, battery. Yeah. You didn't have to charge a battery. Well, I charged anything. the battery last night. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. But um, yeah, I, I, I made sure that I, you know, got the oil changed before I filled the gas up with some stable in there. Um, that's what you always want to make sure for everybody that wants to know, because you have gaskets in your car, rubber bits and pieces. Um, you want all your, your fluids to be completely full uh, when you put a car into storage. That way, um, and uh, I've let, I, I started every six months or so and let it run for a little bit and then uh, stuff like that. But who else is out there? Thanks, you guys. If you're watching, still 108 people watching. Um, make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel. If you want to get involved in the chat, about halfway through the stream, I did turn on subscribers only because there were getting a lot of people and I didn't want the chat to get out of control. So if you want to join in the chat, all you got to do is hit the subscribe button. Um, throw a like on the stream too, if you don't mind. Um, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, but... Um, What's going on next, man? Who do who do you think that? Uh, how much time do you got anyway? Uh, have a whole probably, lot more probably time. None. Yeah. 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 Just want, probably should wind it down. All right. Wind it down. We got any little outros, and you can bounce, and then I'll just do another promotion for what's coming on in the thing, and then I'll probably head out too. I got hacking to do. Sure. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Sure, go follow sure Comac do at Twitter. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow me on and, Twitter. Yeah, thank you, James. I actually, I, I got this, you know, in honor of our Gold Cup. It's the uh, the, the VaporNet one. It's the only ones I buy. They're so nice, dude. They're like, they're like, they're like pajamas, dude. Seriously, the VaporNet. Nice. This nice. one is actually really, really comfortable. It doesn't have any weird things on it. There's no band, weird bands or anything. You know what I mean? It's like there's one little band on the arm, one on the neck, but there's no... I hate it when they put seams on... Even You think of it as a player, too. If you have some like a bunch of seams coming across yourself, that's got to be uncomfortable if you're not wearing an undershirt. You know what I mean? No? Yeah, you're just going to put okay. tape over your nipples, man. <laughs> you, you, got, yeah. you got sensitive nipples. How about this, nips. It's soft. It's soft. <laughs> <laughs> on that note but, all right cody everybody. mac thank you to everybody thank you for jumping on in. we'll see you hopefully next week i'll let you know um if yeah, you still want to do the show we can move it to wednesday if we can't do if, it on if Tuesday, you can't but. make it either we'll move the show or even or if we'll get can... bob to come on or something and i can just bounce out you guys can you can bald and beard without me exactly um, so we'll be in touch take care peace out of work man appreciate it
Thank you, Code A. Folks, that's all she wrote. I don't know who's going live next. Um, just want to reiterate um, that we do have channel memberships. If you want to become a member of the channel, that gives you funky, cool uh, stuff. I think the Yid Kid's a member. See, boom. Hold up. Big old super chat for Spurs72. Uh, $25 super chat. Got to go do some stuff, but I'm not moving. Keep the girl regarding see you next week. Dude, Spurs72, we appreciate the um, the support, man. Look. I started this channel to give a voice to people. And I know that we've gotten away from that a little bit because we haven't been doing a lot of the rant shows where we invite a lot of people in. Um, but that's coming back now. It's going to be bigger than ever. And we want this to be a place for you guys. And uh, support like this just really helps. Um, trust me, I've spent a lot more money on this channel than, than we've earned. But, um, but man, I, it, it really does mean a lot. All the support from all of our Patreons, from Spurs72, um, you know, Spartan Seven Gaming, Wayne Bonner, Mama Coat, Celery Agent, AG, Gogama, Tony Go, Alex Burlton, Bob Spur TV, and everyone else. Um, all of our channel members, um, I'm going to read them, give them a big shout out right now. It's so all of our ch channel members. We got the Yid Kid. Um, Wayne Bonner is a member as well as a Patreon. Tony goes a member as well as a Patreon. Joe Lombardi, uh, Kieran McDonald, Mari from That Spurs, Danny Kiriaku, uh, Saizes, uh, Matt Hayes, uh, Tottenham Blog, and Jinty from You uh, Talk Football Podcast. I can't never remember the name of your channel anymore, Jinty. Um, but yeah, all the support, all the people that do super chats. And all of that stuff, it's greatly appreciated. You guys really helped the channel to to grow and in order to me invest. And a lot of cool stuff coming up this season. Um, you can join our FPL League. League code 14I4M1, all lowercase. Um, top four in that league after the end of the season will win some free THFC Rants merch. Um, if you can't wait for that, if you can't wait till May... Um, you can head on over to thfcrants.com. Um, if you if you want to support the channel, but you feel like you need to get something for your money other than just you know seeing our beautiful faces um, several times a week, uh, you can do that by heading over to THFC Rants, getting you a cool shirt, uh, moon boots, Enoch out, the bun, stuff like that. But um, anyway, guys, make sure to stay tuned. The relaunch for season two of all the stuff. Um, Season two will start um, on April 10th, at the latest, April 9th, if, if I'm quick about it. So in season two, you're going to have Thursday Q&A show, Bald and Beard and Tottenham Boys, Wednesday FPL, um, Let's Talk K with Mr. K, Real Talk with Will and Stell. Um, you know, uh, late night THFC rants pre and post match, uh, pre and post match at 10 p.m. Eastern time. So lots of content coming back up. We're rolling it out full speed. And um, thank you guys for watching. Stay strong. Stay Spurs. And we will see you next time. Five, six, eight, five.